And that's got to be a crazy decision to make. You know, hey, I'm going to drop out of school, put all my focus into this gaming career. Mm -hmm. What kind of conversations did you have with your parents about that? It had to be a really tough decision for them to support you in that and then for you to even make. Yeah, it, I mean, at the time period that I made that decision, I averaged around 500 average viewers, um, which on Twitch is like, I mean, that's amazing. You know, like growing to right. that 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 point is is so hard, especially with just like, basically just twitch growth like i wasn't really doing stuff other places and um i mean even at that time period it was it was tough to to kind of show them hey this is this is actually a, a smart decision to make in in the in the time period that i'm in and um but they were still super supportive i mean my parents are super young and they understand tech and in in streaming and they get it and uh, luckily it wasn't too hard of a decision it really was just super hard on me to even ask them but once i asked them you know, we talked through it and it was all good. And they've definitely never looked back since. So prior to streaming, did you have any other jobs? Did you ever do like uh, fast food or anything like that? Yeah. So when I was 15, I got a job uh, washing dishes at this. It was a pretty nice restaurant. My mom knew both the owners. Um, and so they were super nice. It was like in my small hometown. This is like one of the nicest restaurants in the area. But like, Compared to like the places we have in Charlotte, like it was nothing, bro. Like it was, it was absolutely nothing. But I washed dishes there uh, on weekends, and it would only be like I'd work like maybe eight hours a weekend. Like they'd only have me from like six p.m. Uh, to nine p.m. or or six p.m. to midnight sometimes. Uh, but it was a really good like introductory to get into working. Um, after that, I started working at their. They had like a different like deli style restaurant that was right beside it, and I was working there as well. Did dishes and like made small sandwiches and stuff. Um, and then once I was 16, I got a job at the YMCA because that's where my mom works. And, uh, I was doing stuff. I, I worked in the gym for a little bit. Like when people dunked, I had to be like, don't dunk please. Um, <laughs> and I worked at summer camp. Um, so basically when, when, you know, during the summer kids didn't have a place to go while their, their, their parents were at work. And so I worked with kids a lot. And then during the school years, uh, we did a thing called after school where, you know, basically after school. Uh, buses would pick up the kids take them to one elementary school and then we just all like watch them while their parents are waiting to pick them up basically like we just play basketball and stuff it was mad fun uh i still love it to this day like i could definitely do that for sure i'm just imagining young bread man walking up to like some you know amazing athlete who's dunking <laughs> in basketball like, sir please please no dunking yeah around. yeah yeah please 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 i mean it's it, it, no rim as long as it goes straight through you don't hang on the rim like you're good um so yeah we did fast forward a little bit through the streaming career so i just want to step back a little bit um we talked about you know when you reached the the plateau where you were like all right this could be for real i'm gonna drop out of school put all my focus into this and see what happens mm -hmm. before that you kind of talked a little bit about um posting on twitch adding some people like huskers um you know talk a little bit about from going from the just you watching uh just some of your friends watching to i don't know maybe like that first um that first milestone which in my opinion is like around like that 20 concurrent viewers yeah yeah so really the the, the number one thing that took me from that like three average to the 20 was this guy in chat his name is pun and he still comes into the chat he really resubbed a couple days ago and um he came into the chat and he was telling me because back then wagers and stuff like that were popping and i didn't really like know it like that i played a little bit of cmg but i was too scared to wager my own money like i, I would play like cmg is basically like 1v1s and, and 2v2s against people and you'd load into a match you'd play them and then whoever lost you'd pay the other dude um and i used to play like 25 sometimes pay the other dude yeah 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 so dude, <laughs> there's definitely scammers on there for sure yeah, yeah. <laughs> um yeah so i um I was super nervous to play for money, especially my own money. I would play 25 cent matches where the winner would get 50 cents and I'd still be like sweating, like try harding. Like it was, it, even playing for any amount of money was just made me super nervous. And especially cause it was my own, like I didn't want to lose anything. Um, cause it, it kind of just felt like gambling, you know? Um, right. but, uh, this guy named pun, he joins the stream. He's like, yo, I got a 2v2 child up, uh, lined up with Tommy and Aiden. If you want to play them, you just find one to play them. You guys can play them. And so, uh, I found someone to play him and we, we played him in a 2v2 and we won the 2v2 and I didn't put up any of my money and it, it was, a, it was a lucky win. Like dude, Tommy and Aiden were leagues above me and who I was playing with, like leagues above, but we, it, it was just a bad match for them two games in a row. And I was using the sniper, just picking up snipes. I remember winning a game and Aiden was spectating. He was like, dude, he said some crazy snipes um which is it's just insane so yeah we won that wager pun paid me 
$200, even though I didn't even put up any of my own money. Like, Pun put all of his own money for us to wager them and gave me all the profits. So, um, yeah, yeah he, he basically, like, networked for me and paid me. Like, like he did everything I could even wish for, you know? And so, um, not only did I make $200 that night, which is by far the most I'd ever won, uh, I also got to play against Tommy and Aiden. And a week later, Aiden actually raided me with, like, 7,000 people. And... and Past that, it took me from that three average viewer to 20 easily. And that, that like th those milestones are not easy to hit where right. you're having that many more unique people in your stream every day. Like it was definitely tough to, to keep up, but Aiden is the real reason that it started. Yeah. And I don't think people realize like 90% of people who stream, they never get past like that three viewer, which is really just them, them on their iPad, them yeah. on their iPhone. That was like to me. go to like 20 <laughs> is, is, is crazy. Yeah. So Aiden uh, sent you the raid. You got some people to stick around, which is also hard to do. A lot of people get raided and then they just never see those people ever again. So it's like a one hit, uh, which is great, but um, it doesn't end up working out in the long run. You, you got the 20 people are, are happy with your gameplay. They're sticking around. What's the next evolution in, in your streaming career then? Yeah. So once Aiden had raided me, like a lot more people knew about me, even though um, I, so I, I went from that three to 20, more than 20 people knew about me because of that, that 7,000 person raid. There was like potentially okay. 7,000 people that like at least having their mind. Um, and, a, basically a month or so after Aiden raided me, uh, Joe was looking for someone to raid when he got off. And I didn't know Joe at the time. Didn't, you know, know anything. I knew, I knew of him. Of course, he was one of the biggest streamers at the time. But it wasn't like, you know, we weren't friends at all. And so somebody recommended, hey, you should raid Breadman, you know, and, and that it was literally one comment and then Joe raided me. And so that was kind of like the almost the next step. It definitely let more people know about me, but it didn't take me any higher in terms of average viewership. But I mean, getting a 7,000 person raid from Aiden and a, basically a 5,000 person raid from Joe with, within a month time period it is literally only due to pun coming through and and basically networking for me with his own money you know like that is that's crazy and so uh fast forward a couple months i'm st still streaming you know like like actually picking up something because of these aiden and joe raids and uh december 2020 comes around and by that time i had played a lot more wagers and put up a lot more of my money and was winning like i mean i wouldn't do anything more than five dollars but i was definitely winning consistently and, and felt like good about my my skill level you know even though it was you know not as evolved all of these players today are significantly better than they were back then like you know you took aiden back then and aiden now and made him 1v1 it would be like he would just be smoking them <laughs> um but yeah december 2020 comes around comes around and twitch rivals happens which was basically the first customs tournament ever and customs it, for those who don't know it's like basically pros all load into the same lobby against each other instead of just being in a public lobby um fighting bots and so we all loaded into the lobby we played the 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 Basically, it was like qualifiers. We, we didn't get an invite to the main event. Uh, it was basically just like a, a bunch of big streamers got an invite. And so we played the qualifiers and we ended up winning the quals. And in second place, uh, so it was me, Prayers, and Nobu who had won the quals. And I'd met them all from playing wagers. Um, and in second place, Brolic. Brolic actually got second place in that. I remember Ebates was in that event. Like a lot of people that are like, like bigger now actually played in those quals as well with us. But that was like the number one thing that got me recognized because after that Twitch Rivals quals, Iron had actually reached out, and at the time, Iron was massive. Like, he was him. Um, yep. He had reached out and asked if I wanted to play ever, and that was basically, like, the, the start. That was definitely what took me from 20 average to even 50 average to 100 average. Yeah, it's funny, because I was a mod for Iron at that time, so yeah. a little inside info I had was, you know, his dad actually recommended that Iron should check you out. He liked your personality. He thinks you guys would fit well together, and I remember literally that that meetup basically of Iron and, and Breadman happening, and it's kind of cool to see from that uh, yeah. perspective as well. That is crazy. Well, the crazy thing is too, like if you don't know Iron, like he's not the type of person to reach out. Like he keeps his circle the exact same it is because it's like you know change is difficult, and and there's no reason that a a five thousand seven thousand viewer average streamer needs to reach out to a twenty average viewer. You know, like he gets right. nothing out of playing with me. You know, and so mm -hmm. like not even from like a like a that standpoint he also just didn't reach out to people in general even if i had seven thousand, like it's just not he doesn't normally do that and so him reaching out was just beyond crazy like i mean that's just it literally is what took me from you know the 20 average 50 average to that 100 average where people actually started like recognizing my name you know right 
And so, yeah, so you you get the raid or you get to play with iron, which is crazy. But a lot of people have played with iron and their average doesn't go up, you know. So credit to you. I don't want you just to say like, oh, it's just luck. You know, I got raided. I got to play with iron. This would happen. But you were able to hold viewers and, and keep those viewers once you got those opportunities. Um, when you went from 100 viewers, you're playing with iron. You know, what was the next evolution in? um to where you are now you know how did you keep growing that what types what types of things did you try um to continue to to capitalize on that opportunity yeah so like playing with iron definitely like there were there were highs and lows you know like if 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 i'm live at the same time iron's live and this is after say like a month of playing with iron so we played pretty regularly i would wake up at 3 a.m to play with them and the thing is like the people that played with iron like it was me shaded op mark devious yeet there was a bunch of us you really, you had to take shifts to play with iron like <laughs> yeah. he would do like 30 hour streams and you would basically like clock in your your eight hour shift like mid his 30 hour right. stream like it was it was it was no joke like he streamed like he's probably done over 124 hour streams and he just did it for fun like he just enjoyed like that's just his thing you know um and so yeah playing with them was super fun but when i wasn't playing with them i i saw like noticeable viewer decrease i mean people wanted to watch iron like like that makes sense you know and there was a, there was a part of me that was wanted to basically get on when he wasn't on and and that was like for for a little bit i definitely did that for a solid month if i wasn't playing with him i was not playing i was not playing at the same time as him at all you know and timing that was difficult because he was doing these 30 30 sometimes i mean maybe he's done a 40 hours i mean he was grinding you know like it was it was crazy but yeah i would i would avoid him essentially in order to gain the viewers that were normally watching me when i was playing with him when he was offline and that is a really toxic way to to maintain viewership like it's very taxing and it's not like too beneficial to you because if if iron ever decides to hit that go live and i'm live it's like all oh, fuck you know what i mean like it's just that's that's the stream gone right there you know and so the number one thing that i did to get out of that loop was just to play when he was on i mean it, it obviously it's, it's it makes sense you play with the you play when he's on and any follower you get any new viewer you get are people that aren't from iron you know and so that was essentially how i got myself out of that like like rut and uh up back in, into growth and so yeah i went from 100 average and got up to maybe 150 but really you there's 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 like keystone moments that they need to happen to hit different levels of 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 viewership there's plateaus that happen and the the next real big thing that happened was iron or not iron uh i spent isaac asked me to be his duo and so we started playing tournaments together and that was what took me from basically 100 viewers to, to 200 300 average thanks for watching this clip from mimosa brunch if you enjoyed it make sure to subscribe and check out the full interview right here Right here, guys. Right here.